All right, as I said, I I keep it plain and simple. I ask you a couple of questions. We go from there. If you don't know the answer, I know not everyone can know everything. Just say, sorry, I haven't been exposed to it yet. It's more important that you know where to find the information you need. And I guess we are all should be capable in this area. <laughs> You talked about migration. Yes, you were not really part of it, but when sizing VMs, how do you approach sizing a VM when deploying or migrating to Azure? Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, just to clarify myself, I'll repeat. Uh, initially, I was not part of my migration, but later on, I have done many migrations and I have planned migrations also. Okay. Uh, so coming to your question that uh, it is about the sizing, you said, right? How, how do we determine the size? How do, you, uh, how do you approach deploying or, or migrating a machine to Azure? What are the requirements? What are the criteria you're looking into? How do you decide what to do, what to set up? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep my answer in two parts. One of the part is pre-migration. I'm not talking about the technical and, and portal and tools. So this is pre-migration where we review the cost, services, provider, whether we have to go with Azure, with AWS, and this assessment itself takes months where we have our cloud center of excellence team they they uh, they involve in this we have uh, managers cfos and everything compliance team that which region should, can we go for example if i'm working for a uae project so can we go out of uae region if we are getting some good service so this kind of assessment we do first that what kind of downtime affordability we have what kind of uh, uh, failover uh, we can afford everything this kind of assessment we do uh, here we don't have uh, much technical here we uh, do the interviews with app owner we do the interviews with networking team with infrastructure team with uh, finance team and with corporate team that what are their goals uh, and uh, obviously with ITSM team that uh, what, are, what are the available slots is there any freeze timing and everything so this is one part which is uh, more than technical it is business critical so we discuss business and uh, the, the budget they have for it everything once that is done then we move ahead to the technical part when it comes to technical part uh, we have many tools in market uh, I have worked on Azure migration assessment tool and migration tool Azure itself has tools and I have worked on th with third party tools also one of them is uh, being Corrent. So these tools they help us we can install these tools in uh, one of the PCs in uh, it could be anything it could be Hyper-V it could be v, uh, vCenter or maybe we could uh, get the physical server depending on that we get our uh, OVA file and we can have our server in our existing infrastructure once we start running that it will start the discovery meanwhile simultaneously will create a project on the portal once the portal is ready we'll start getting the servers that okay there are example 200 servers in your data center obviously we are not moving all of them together so what we'll do we'll segregate them or we'll select okay as of now i want to move only these 10 so after discovery we'll select the servers which i want to move once i select them then the there will be an assessment and this will be a technical assessment here i can decide whether i want to run it for half an hour i want to run it for uh, 30 minutes 30 days uh, maybe a month or two months depending on the nature of the application and at the time of interviews uh, what application owner has said about this application that we should run it uh, specifically for two weeks because there are some applications which uh, which get a hike or a peak usage at the last week of the month so depending on, on on those interviews and the input from the client or app owners we decide that how long should we run this assessment for once we are done with those assessment we do get a report or uh, the assessment report uh, and we it's almost similar in every tool i mean looks different in every tool but almost similar the approach is similar so if i talk about current or azure migration tool i will get an assessment report and in that assessment report i will have the fair idea or, or the complete detail i would call it more than fair it, it has a granular details like uh, example this is the server this is on vCenter. It has 32 GB of RAM, 500 GB hard disk. So compared to this, this is what you could have on Azure. And with this, they will uh, also add some additional thing that while scanning for these 30 days or for these 15 days, tool notice that though this server has a, a capacity of 32 GB, but for these all 15 days when we were scanning, only 50% were utilized. So this is a suggestible, a suggestible size. This is as it is size. This is a, a recommended size. And if there are some servers which are being overutilized, maybe in those 15 days where we were scanning, 
uh, tool recognized or to, to realize that uh, CPU or RAM users were more than 90%, which could later impact the application uh, for the maintenance and for downtime and for availability. So then that time the tool will suggest us that we should go for a higher side. Uh, and again, those are suggestions. Later on, again, we can discuss, we can check, we can have a, a meeting with app owner, we can check the pricing and everything. And then we can come to a, a discussion or, or a decision that which size should we take uh, against this server. And once that is ready, then we can go ahead for the migration part where we'll uh, do the test migration. Once that is done, delete and then do the actual migration and they, then they cut over. So while migrating, we will get an option whether you, we want to accept those suggestions. So it will apply all the sizes and everything like that. If not, what size should we do that? So we'll get that uh, that, that uh, step. We can do that manually also. So this is the oh, approach. No. Very good. I mean, you're one of the few people who actually bring in the business side for sizing and what to do. No, it's 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 enough. I I see you understand the topic. In the context after migration, you have machines running. You need high availability. Mm -hmm. As you said, too, you have peak times where the machine is being more utilized than than usual. In that context, what can you tell me about the function and the difference between scale set and availability group? Scale set and availability group. Mm -hmm. By availability group, did you mean availability set and availability zone? Virtual machine yes. scale set, I understood. I will explain the virtual machine scale set first. Uh, VMSS is something where I, I have that liberty or I have that feature or I have that option where I can select that, uh, okay, I know my application, this application will have a peak hour, so this application normally will have 100 users, but tomorrow at 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., I'm gonna have 1,000 users. So under VMSS, I have that option. I can make it time-bound that tomorrow, uh, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., I should have 10 extra machines. So only for that particular time, that liberty I have in VMSS, that is one feature. Another one is we can have it on metrics based also that if initially while deploying VMSS, I can select two or three instances that my application is running on these three instances. But if uh, let's say the memory utilization or, or, or IOPS or any anything, I mean, we have a, a long list of those metrics. We can select any of those. Most of the time memory I would use, uh, for example. So memory, if it crosses 70 percent and above and it stays like that for 10 minutes, then I should have two more instances uh, spin up over there. So my load will be balancing uh, in, in that way. So that is what uh, a virtual machine scale set is. And talking about availability uh, group, uh, so I, I uh, assumed you mean availability set and availability uh, zone by that, right? Yeah, I just put it under one umbrella as availability right. groups. Got it, got it. <clears throat> so uh, we're talking about availability zone or availability set. Availability set is nothing but it's, uh, I would say, a logical uh, a grouping. It, it's in it's in one data center. Let's say I have 900 racks, so I, I, I will have fault domains. I, I could separate them. I, when I say I, the I, I, here I mean Azure. They, they do it. We just have to create the fault domains. Uh, and then I can start deploying my servers. Here I do not have that liberty that I can uh, shut down my server. Like in VMSS, if, if the same load decreases, my VMs will decrease as well. But here I will have the continues. But uh, what will happen here, if something goes wrong with uh, one set of rack, I will still have my application up and running because two set of racks are still working. They have different ISP or different power supply, something like that. But in availability set, if something goes wrong with the data center, with the entire building, then I will not have high availability for my application, which I could achieve using availability zone. Availability zone is something uh, where I will have in one region, I will have multiple data centers, maximum majority three I have seen. Uh, so in a region, if I'm deploying my machine, I could use availability zone and that will go to so my first machine will go to zone one, zone two, zone three. And it's not necessary to use all of them. I could use only two zones also, depending on the nature of my application. And that is how I will achieve high availability. But the drawback with the availability zone, I see, uh, it's not available in every region. And if you have some compliance issue that your data has to be in this some region and that doesn't have a availability zone, then you are missing on something. Hey, you talk about applications a lot. 
Can you explain to me the difference between <coughs> application gateway and load balancer? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, though I because I, I told you right, I explained I have been coming. I I come from a system admin background. Uh, looking at mm -hmm. my background, what I have been assigning most of the projects and work, it's on infrastructure side. So I have a good hands-on oh, with infrastructure. A little less with PaaS, but yeah, I still got your question. So you said uh, differences between application gateway in and load, and load, load, load balancer, balancer the, the load balancer, which uh, the, gen, uh, the one which we were discussing. So the, both are these high availability services which are offered by Azure. There are two more traffic manager and front door. Uh, so talks about, uh, talking about load balancer, it works on layer four. Uh, application gateway works on a layer seven, which could be used for HTTP and HTTPS. Uh, types we have in load balancer, it's internal and public, uh, and it, it works on uh, uh, the routing methods. It has hash based, where in application gateway we have path based. Uh, load balancer is a regional service and uh, no load balancer is a global service and application gateway is a regional <laughs> service <laughs> sometimes i get confused and both of them have then help probe and redundancy uh, but there are few extra features when it comes to application gateway like uh, ssl and tll termination is supported and waf is supported in application gateway uh, and uh, yeah, I think uh, the SKUs are different when it comes to application gateway. We have uh, many SKUs in, in uh, load balancer. We have basic and standard. Uh, obviously, the pricing difference is there. So these are the difference which I could remember. No, very good. I mean, as I said, I'm not expecting you to know everything I'm asking you, I but I am expecting someone, if I hire someone, that he A, understands the concept, and then B knows where to dig in and how to get it set up. If I am asking you now, I need this application having so many app services, I need to have a load balancer running that you know, okay, I know where my sources are and I, I'll give you feedback tomorrow, I get it done. So, right. and you understand the concept that that's all I need to know. I mean, you are an Azure Cloud engineer, you know how to 